Hi friends, I'm Dr. Kuzey Mabbas Lokanwala from Motiwala Homeopathic Medical College, Nasik, Maharashtra. Today we are here to study a topic that is endometriosis. Now what is endometriosis? Before we get into detail, let's talk about our objectives for studying endometriosis today. Our objective, at the end of the class, we'll be able to understand definition of endometriosis, the epidemiology, the sites where endometriosis can occur, the types of endometriosis, because exact cause of endometriosis is not known, there are a few hypotheses and theories for endometriosis. So we'll talk about those theories, the predisposing factors for endometriosis, the clinicals on the basis of which we'll make our diagnosis, so symptoms and signs, the diagnosis of endometriosis and management for endometriosis. So let's start. First and foremost question comes, what is endometriosis? So when we define endometriosis, endometriosis can be defined as a condition characterized by presence of tissue having characteristic like that of functional endometrium at any site other than uterine cavity. So how do we define endometriosis? Endometriosis can be defined as presence of endometrial tissue outside the lining of the uterine cavity or it can be also defined as proliferation of endometrium in any site other than the uterine mucosa. I repeat, it can be defined as any condition characterized by presence of tissue outside the uterine cavity or in the uterine cavity. If it's in the uterine cavity, then we will call it as endometriosis interna or if it's outside then endometriosis external. Next let's go to the epidemiology. In epidemiology first and foremost is age. Now, we've got to remember endometriosis is seen only during reproductive age group which gives us the idea that it is mainly based on estrogen. So estrogen becomes the main cause for endometriosis. So we say first age common in the reproductive age group. Next, the true incidence of endometriosis exactly is not known. We will discuss later on because there are many cases which remain asymptomatic. So true incidence is unknown but approximately roughly it said 1 to 5 percent of cases throughout the world are the females who come up with the complaints of endometriosis. But the noticeable point over here, the point to be noted is that 30 to 50 percent of the females land up with infertility. So we can go either, they can say infertility leads to endometriosis, which we'll discuss later on, or endometriosis is the cause for infertility. So the second cause is infertility part. The third, histology, endometrial glands are seen with the stroma where there is may or may not be association of inflammatory reaction. So we'll discuss further that if pelvic inflammatory diseases are there, there may be the chances of endometriosis. The third, that is the third one. Next, the fourth is hereditary. Yes, endometriosis has a genetic linkage. That's the reason we find females who suffer from endometriosis, if they do conceive in future, there are chances because of a genetic predisposition. Nowadays, the research show us that there are few genes some HNA linkages are available because of which the daughters and the mothers who give the birth to the girls have the chances. The girls, the daughters in future have the chance of suffering from endometriosis. So there is a heredity link or genetic linkage. So we re recap, first and foremost in epidemiology, age is the factor, especially reproductive age group. Second, incidence is not known worldwide somewhere 1 to 5 percent, but maximum we see in infertile patients. The third point, histologically, PID, etc. are the cases which get involved. And the fourth one, there is a genetic predisposition or a linkage. Next is we go to sites. Now the sites depends whether it's endometriosis internal or endometriosis external. Let's discuss about that in detail. If it's pelvic, then we consider in the pelvic cavity or if it's extra pelvic, outside the pelvic cavity. If it's extra pelvic, then it may be associated with the umbilical area. Again, we'll discuss further 
how exactly some procedures like laparotomy may lead to endometriosis associated with the umbilicus or maybe scars associated with laparotomy maybe distant organs like lungs and pleura may get associated or many other distant organs next is if it's endometriosis interna if so in pelvic endometriosis endometriosis interna is called as adenomyosis now what is adenomyosis adenomyosis as we already gave the word is endometriosis interna in the uterine cavity but the point to be noted over here is not in the association of internal part of uterus it's associated with myometrium if it's extra uterine then it is called as endometriosis externa so endometriosis externa where in the pelvic cavity the involvement of ovary that is 30% pelvic peritoneum which may be 10% and the other areas like fallopian tube vagina bladder rectum pelvic colon and ligaments may get involved so we recap uterine cavity adenomyosis that is endometriosis interna and endometriosis externa where it is associated with the organs in the pelvic region next this year we will be able to see the photographic appearance of endometriosis like here associated with the uterine cavity the ovarian ligaments the fallopian tubes the ovary we'll discuss further how if it gets associated with ovary we'll call it as chocolate cyst of ovary or powder burns etc but this picture shows about the involvement or the sites of endometriosis here you will be able to see the peritoneal implants the chocolate cyst ovary you can see here this side the bilateral involvement here in the laparoscopic view you can see the bleeding as i just mentioned the chocolate cyst ovary can be seen here more here the bleeding part here again is a photograph of adenomyosis that is endometriosis interna here note the thickened area of the wall of the uterus which can be mistaken for fibroids so in the dd part fibroids can also be included because fibroids mimic like that of endometriosis next is about the theories of hypothesis like in the beginning we already discussed the exact cause of endometriosis is not known so what few theories or postulations are being put forth among which the first one is endometrial implantation theory now what do we mean by endometrial implantation theory as the word suggests endometrial implantation means there may be few females who may be having complaints like for example cervical stenosis now usually what is the physiology behind as we are all aware in first year we have studied in menstrual cycle that because of the contraction of uterus during bleeding phase whatever the endometrial tissues etc are there they move out of the cervix via the vagina but if there is cervical stenosis this may lead to a trouble and as a result there is this here first cause which may happen and that is retrograde menstruation now what do you mean by retrograde retrograde means retrograde means backward so the bleeding may not move out of the genital tract and may go backward into the fallopian tubes or may go out from the fimbria into the peritoneal cavity so first is endometrial implantation theory or retrograde menstruation second is vascular or lymphatic theory which is also called as embolism theory now when the first theory was put forth questions came in that if it is due to retrograde menstruation then what answer should be given for the implants which are outside the pelvic cavity to distant organs so the answer came in with some theories few people like avenoff and meyer they put forth that vascular and lymphatic theory acts like that of an embolism theory now what do you mean by embolism theory as we are all aware that during the dino bleeding phase if it happens though usually in physiological condition it may not but due to some pathological causes unknown causes the whatever shedding of endometrium will be there will enter to the blood stream and will act like an embola as a result it will go to the distant organs and will lead to endometriosis external in fact even to the lungs or to the pleura or maybe liver or many other distant organs so this theory 
gives a little bit idea about endometriosis externa. The third hypothesis which has been put forth is about mechanical stress. Now when we say mechanical stress means what? Few causes like fibroids or myomas. Fibroids or myomas lead to pressure symptoms, especially if these myomas are large in size. And as a result, we need to mechanical stress working in the uterus and this also will go for the problem of endometriosis. The fourth is serosal cell metaplasia, a celomic metaplasia theory. Now what does this mean? Here friends, we've got to understand about metaplasia. What do you mean by metaplasia? Metaplasia means the conversion of a cell from one form to the other. So here, this theory explains that in some distant organs, like for example liver, the hepatocytes, due to some unknown reason, like irritations or infection, may get converted and start functioning like that of endometrial tissue. So the tissues of or the cells of liver may start converting and functioning like that of endometrial tissue. So serosal metaplasia theory, a synomic metaplasia theory, explains this here. And the last one is immunological and genetic theory. I think if you recollect, a few minutes back we gave the idea that heredity plays a very important role here. So, this here is this theory of immunological and genetic theory. Immunological, there have been patients who are immunocompromised and it has been observed that few patients with endometriosis are seen in these immunological causes associated. So, this here, let's recap endometrial implantation theory, that is retrograde menstruation, vascular and lymphatic embolism theory, mechanical stress, serosal cell metaplasia, and immunological and genetic theory. Next, let's go to predisposing factors. Now here, with observation, few predisposing factors have been observed. First is fibroids, hyperesterism, which is seen in fibroids and metropathia hemorrhagica. As we are all aware, fibroids is again seen in females, those who are nulliparous, with excessive estrogen level in their body, and again more prone for, that is the condition called as endometriosis. Delayed marriage. Nowadays, high societies and the marriage age is getting postponed further. 30s, 35, 40s and now the chances because of excessive estrogen level working into the body, into the uterine cavity especially, leads to endometriosis. Next is estrogen secreting tumours. Though rare ones, but there are few estrogen secreting tumours like that of granulosa cell and theca cell tumours. Or sometimes Exogenous estrogen, which may be given for treatment, we call it as prolonged estrogen therapy, like HRT, hormone replacement therapies, and may lead to the complaint of endometriosis in future. The other predisposing factor is cervical stenosis. If you recollect, a few minutes back we gave the idea that cervical stenosis may lead to further retrograde menstruation. And this is again the cause which has been identified roughly according to the hypothesis, leads to endometriosis. Insufflation and curettage. Now insufflation, I think we have studied in infertility topic that there are some investigations like insufflation so that we can understand about the patency of uterine tract. Here, if these kinds of investigations are done, this becomes a complication that probably the female in future may end up with complaint of endometriosis. Curettage, for some diagnostic purpose or maybe for some therapeutic purpose, Curettage, that is dilation and curettage is done, like for MTP, which is a therapeutic purpose, or for diagnostic purpose, like in DUB, curettage is done. This, of course, leads to harm in few cases, or irritation to the uterine cavity, and in future, these female may have the problem of endometriosis. Next is about the macroscopic appearance of endometriosis, especially uterine endometriosis, that is adenomyosis. If you recollect, few minutes back we gave the idea that uterine endometriosis or adenomyosis is called as endometriosis interna. So we are talking about endometriosis interna first. Endometriosis interna is of two types. First is diffuse type which is more common and second is localized which is occasional. So more common is the diffuse type. Now what are the differentiating points and what are similarities? First let's go to the differentiating point. In diffuse type of endometriosis interna, which is common, there is a symmetrical enlargement of the uterus. And on the other side, if it's localized type, which is occasional, the uterus is asymmetrically enlarged. So I recap, the diffuse type, which is common, 
the uterus is symmetrical enlarged why in antinomiasis if it's localized then the uterus is asymmetrically enlarged the second point which is a similarity that in both these cases that is the endometrial area is firm in consistency even in the common that is diffuse type or the occasional that is localized type it's firm in consistency and in both types something which is again very important to be noted is that common a whole appearance is there there is absence of capsule so no capsule dark brown spots are seen and there is presence of endometrial tissue next we go here we can see the endometriosis interna or adenomyosis in the uterine cavity but not associated with the endometrium as you can see here in the myometrial area next is the macroscopic appearance of endometriosis externa endometriosis externa the most important site for endometriosis externa is ovary this again is very important in the ovary the ovary is enlarged and cystic that is the very important point to be noted the surface of the ovary on laparoscopic view there may be observation of powder burns matchstick burns kind of appearance may be seen or matchstick head appearance is there the other point to be noted is the tunica albuginea will be thickened in here that is endometriosis external especially endometriosis of the ovary and the last most important one is we call it as chocolate cyst ovary on laparoscopic view you will be able to find there will be hematogenous spread the presence of the hemosiderin granules as well as blood and we talk we call that as chocolate cyst ovary so chocolate or terry cyst will be observed this here you will be able to see the powder burns here in the uterine cavity or classical gun metal outside at the support area and here is the chocolate cyst ovary the complication the most important complication which may lead to the infertility troubles as we are going to discuss further is about the adhesions over here so next is diagnosis now here comes very important point because we said in the beginning that endometriosis usually is less often throughout the world see but the problem is that there are many cases which remain asymptomatic so here the point to be noted is that endometriosis is often misdiagnosed leading to delays in treatment sometimes for several years and the reason is delay in diagnosis because it's observed fact that endometriosis is as such called as disease of the affluent yeah rich people so in rich people probably majority of that and though not necessary but it's seen that they delay their pregnancies and as a result in 30s or 40s leading to endometriosis so delay in diagnosis because of slow progression of symptoms and increasing infertility till complete reproductive failure next is for diagnosis like we are all aware the tripod stand where on the tripod stand is the diagnosis the three legs of the tripod stand first will be the symptoms second the signs and third investigation so our diagnosis will lie on these three stands that is symptoms which will we get from the history a very precise history if you go for a proper examination we go for signs and if required investigation which in this case do require because a black and white proof is required so investigation signs and symptoms will help us in make our diagnosis so let's move further first and foremost the adenomyosis or endometriosis interna and extra uterine endometriosis or endometriosis external the differentiating point over here is first in the age adenomyosis endometriosis interna is mostly seen in females in their 40s while endometriosis externa is seen in females who are in their 30s parity females with adenomyosis are multiparous females while females with extra uterine endometriosis and endometriosis externa are nulliparous females and another differentiating point is that endometriosis interna is seen in females who are in the low socio economic strata while endometriosis externa is seen in females who are in high socio economic strata next is important tool we already gave the word is symptoms in symptoms as we already gave the word asymptomatic but if symptoms do come then a very 
clear point is remember the pain this word which includes first dysmenorrhea dysmenorrhea which have to be remembered especially secondary dysmenorrhea we are aware dysmenorrhea what is dysmenorrhea we have studied in the earlier classes dysmenorrhea can be defined as painful menstruation of sufficient magnitude which incapacitates the female from a day to day activity and compels her to resort to painkillers and in dysmenorrhea we have studied it's a primary and secondary here the dysmenorrhea is secondary dysmenorrhea because there is a cause outside not in the uterine cavity as such the second symptom is dyspareunia again we are aware dyspareunia is painful coital act but in this the dyspareunia is deep dyspareunia remember deep dyspareunia and not superficial one there are other causes associated with vulva and vagina for superficial dyspareunia here the cause is deep enough associated with the uterus or the adnexal structure so deep dyspareunia the third this or pain is dyspasia dyspasia means painful defecation because the implants may be there associated the rectum may get involved leading to painful defecation and if anterior involvement of bladder or urethra occurs it leads to dysuria that is painful menstruation so during urination pain so the four pains which have to be remembered is dysmenorrhea secondary dysmenorrhea dyspareunia that is deep dyspasia that is painful defecation dysuria that is painful menstruation the other complaint is backache now backache is seen in many patients one of the complaint which can lead to backache is due to stretching due to adhesions involvement low backache in females endometriosis is one of the cause especially endometriosis external so backache is another symptom though a weak symptom it is not helpful in our diagnosis part acute abdomen this is again a weak many complaints have acute abdomen but pain in the pelvic region or the extra pelvic region other complaint other symptom is premenstrual tension we are aware pre pms that is premenstrual syndrome these females in the endometriosis have the complaint that they get pain throughout the month before the bleeding the pain occurs during the time of bleeding the pain intensity increases and later on the intensity goes down but throughout the month there is a low grade pain but before the bleeding the pain occurs and many time it can be associated like that of premenstrual tension syndrome there may be associated of other symptoms like bleeding this here is important in bleeding versus menorrhagia now what is menorrhagia menorrhagia is excessive amount of bleeding either more than 80 ml or the number of days are more more than 60 days the first is menorrhagia second as we already discussed cyclic hematuria during menstruation cyclic bleeding per rectum during menstruation can occur and one more that is vicarious menstruation now what is vicarious menstruation vicarious menstruation means bleeding from the other sides like from nose etc we call it as vicarious menstruation so during the time of bleeding phase instead of bleeding from the genital tract bleeding can occur from the other outlets the other complaint is a serious one that is infertility if you recollect in the beginning we talked about that 30 to 50 percent of patients come up with the main trouble of infertility actually endometriosis just gets diagnosed during the time when the management plan is being made for infertility or in fact the main complaint of a patient who is coming in the opd may be for infertility inability to conceive and endometriosis becomes the cause for infertility so infertility the female herself may note some mass as a result she may be able to tell you the symptom or intermittent pyrexia may be present here the point to be noted intermittent pyrexia will be there if this endometriosis gets infected because we are aware fever and infection are interrelated with each other next is signs as we already gave the word first leg of our tripod stand that is symptoms have already helped us we have a rough idea now signs for which we need examination first is pelvic tenderness when we go for pelvic examination you will find pelvic tenderness in the area wherever there will be endometriosis so there will be tenderness the second point fixed retroverted uterus now what do we mean by retroversion i think again we have studied in the earlier classes retroversion means backward displacement of uterus so why backward displacement of uterus occurs 
because there will be pressure centers and fixed retroversion will be because of adhesions which are there so fixed retroversion will be the second finding and if you remember in retroversion we have studied how to diagnose fixed retroversion how to get the idea in the examination is that you will go for the examination in the route of PV examination the third is nodularity of the pouch of Douglas and uterosacral ligament there will be presence of nodules or ovaries may be enlarged of course this will be on the laparoscopic point of view ovaries will be enlarged and tender and ovarian cyst we already gave the word few minutes back that chocolate cyst ovary will be visible so cyst will be visible on laparoscopy next is investigation so our two legs of our tripod stand that is symptoms and signs are done the third leg which will require though a diagnosis probably maybe 80 to 90 percent with the help of the symptoms and signs but we need a black and white proof for the management of endometriosis so we need to ask the patient to go for investigation and the investigations few investigations are the ones which are non-invasive and few are invasive one the invasive ones like laparoscopy which is the most often thought investigation which is helpful we'll discuss about that a few minutes later second is cystoscopy and proctosigmoidoscopy which can also be performed histopathological examinations can be done imaging techniques will be used serum CA 125 can be advised now first laparoscopy which is of utmost value now here the value of laparoscopy is a very simple approach and the approach is it permits a see and treat approach what do we mean by see and treat approach see and treat approach means the laparoscope the surgeon is going to observe and whatever will be the finding on the basis of that the movement decision will be taken and the approach will be taken treatment will be given although its effectiveness may be limited by the nature of the disease and the surgeon's skill because as we are aware the implants whatever during laparoscopy the laparoscopic surgeon has observed he or she will remove those implants but there are full chance that some of the other implants during the process of laparoscopy may would have had missed out and those implants if remain behind it again leads to further implantation further trouble the clinical features may continue so you cannot say that laparoscopy the see and treat approach is always curable that's the reason cure for the endometriosis is till date not clear enough as such so we say that is limited by the nature of the disease next is laparoscopy the appearance will be as we already gave the word the endometriosis may appear brown black like powder burn or may be clear atypical one and endometriosis may be associated with peritoneal windows the treatment if you go for overall approach of the treatment for endometriosis is simple recognize the goals now what do you mean by recognizing the goals see the patient has come in an OPD with what exactly the main aim as I said few minutes back the patient has come with main complaint of infertility or maybe the patient has come with the main complaint of pain during menstruation or the patient has come with the main complaint of excessive bleeding now your goal will be on the basis of that so the symptoms which the female is giving you your approach will be decided so first and foremost if the pain management is to be done if she is complaining of pain during the time of bleeding so pain management will be given with the help of pain givers if fertility part as we already gave the word infertility complaint so fertility has to be restored the third you got to discuss with the patient see few frank opinions have to be given that disease may be chronic and not curable so some palliative mode of treatment are available which if required may be given and some optional treatment which are unproven and are non-existent so this frank